Thank you for cruising by for my daily devotions. It is October 25th, 2024. We're going to look at Ephesians 1, Matthew 15, Psalm 85, and Job chapter 19. Read the sixth chapter of Galatians yesterday. Great chapter. Great, great chapter. Starting at verse 7. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whatever you plant, you're going to harvest, okay? It comes back to you in kind, okay? Verse 8, whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. What are your values? Is it about sowing to reap the flesh, to get just stuff you want, to make you feel good, satisfy your desires? Or is it about stuff of the spirit, you know? The, the reward of the stuff of the Spirit doesn't always come now in this life, but you get rewarded in eternal life, okay? In other words, you're not, you're not earning eternal life, but your rewards come to you in eternal life to be rewarded. So you might have a tough time here, but when you're serving the Lord and operating in the Spirit to serve Him, the blessings come back, come back to you in on the other side in eternal life. You don't earn eternal life, but the blessings come in eternal life. Don't be deceived. Don't, God cannot be mocked. We reap what we sow. We harvest what we plant. Hang on to that. It'll, you'll be blessed. Let's take a minute and pray and then jump into the word. Father, speak to us today. Speak to us through uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 1, Matthew 15, Psalm 85, and Job 19. Change our lives, Father, by what we hear from you as we listen to your word and look at your word and read it and change our lives by the truth we find there is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms and every with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with the pleasure of, and with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to, hope, to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for, to, to, for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Matthew chapter 15. <clears throat>
Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. Jesus replied, And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses his curses uh, their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that anyone declares that what might have been used to help your father or mother is devoted to God. They are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus, you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. Anytime we elevate tradition above the word of God, we're way out of whack, okay? And they were. You hypocrites, Isaiah, was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen and understand what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, every plant that it, my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. The blind lead the blind. Both, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, explain this parable to us. Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of a person's mouth come from the heart, and these defile God, de defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what defile a person, but eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. <clears throat> Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so the disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him, Lord, help me, she, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your, your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up on a mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet, and he healed them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry, or they may collapse on the way. His disciples answered, Where could we get enough bread in this remote place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied, and a few small fish. And he told the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, they in turn to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. Afterward, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was 4,000 men besides women and children. They didn't count the women and children, probably around 15, 16,000 people there. And he fed them all with just a few biscuits and some, some kind of sardine-like fish. After Jesus had sent the crowd away, he got into the boat and went to the vicinity of Magadan. And Psalm 85. Psalm 85. You, Lord, showed favor to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all the wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, God our Savior, and put away your displeasure toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God, had the, God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people and his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. 
Surely his salvation is near those who fear him and his glory may dwell in our, in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness brings forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Job chapter 19. Good old Job. Job 19. Job and his buddies, who really weren't, weren't his buddies, they said they were. Job responds to Bildad the Shuite and the nonsense that Bildad was spewing toward him, okay? Then Job replied, How long will you torment me and crush me with words? Ten times now you have reproached me. Shamelessly you attack me. If it is true that I have gone astray, my error remains my concern alone. If indeed you would exalt yourself above me and use my humiliation against me, then know that God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. Though I cry violence, I get no response. Though I call for help, there is no justice. He has blocked my way so I cannot pass. He has shrouded my paths in darkness. He has stripped me of my honor and removed the crown from my head. He tears me down on every side till I am done. He uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns against me. He, re he counts me among his enemies. His troops advance in force. They build a siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. He has alienated my family from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. My relatives have gone away. My closest friends have forgotten me. My guests and my female servants count me a, count me a foreigner. They look on me as on a stranger. I summon my servant, but he does not answer, though I beg him with my, with my own mouth. My breath is offensive to my wife. I am loathsome to my own family. Even the little boys scorn me. When I appear with them, they ridicule me. All my intimate friends detest me. Those I love have turned against me. I am nothing but skin and bones. I have escaped only by the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me. My friends have pity for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? Oh, what my, oh, that my words were recorded and they were written on a scroll and they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. I know that my redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And let's see what that says. Or on my grave, okay. God, in other words, God's going to be with me. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. My own heart yearns within me. If you say how we will, how we will hound him since the root of the humble lies in him. Root of the trouble lies in him. In other words, he's... There's, his friends were saying that his troubles were because of his actions, his sins. They weren't. He's been tested by God. You should fear the sword yourself, for wrath will bring punishment by the sword. And then you will know that there is judgment. Wow. The Lord has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thank you for speaking, for clarity. Uh, thank you for your word. Change our lives by it, Father. It's profound. Make us different because we heard from you today. That's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.